What are we looking at for this next phase? I think uh, our investments in R&D for the digital economy are critical for our larger smart nation and digital economy vision. In this phase, we are adding another 300 million Sing dollars. And what we are focusing on are frontier technologies. And I mean by that things like artificial intelligence, cyber security, big data and IoT related work and so on. And these are important drivers of transformation in industry and value creation for the future. So which industries do you think would jump on board? Well, I think the applications, for example, when you look at something like AI, uh, there are several sectors, uh, financial services, transportation, and our port and airport type of areas. And I think in general, there is a range of sectors, but we are prioritizing a few to get the ball rolling because that's where the immediate application possibilities and value creation is most apparent. Uh, as part of that digital and smart nation push, you're also rolling out your 5G plan. What's the status of that? So we will be issuing a consultation document shortly, and that will then invite feedback from the industry. Uh, this pertains to in particular how the spectrum should be allocated in order for the 5G rollout to be effective. Once we've completed the consultations, then I think we'll be in a position to launch the actual process. And then our expectation is by next year, we should be able to start the rollout. And 5G is important because, you know, when you talk about peak data rates, when you talk about lower latency, when you're talking about device density, it now affords a whole new way of doing businesses. And I think that's a recognition globally. And what we want to do is make sure that Singapore is at the forefront of that change. For the auction, the 5G spectrum, how much are you planning to raise? How much do you think you can raise from that? I think we will wait for the process to start um, because I think our most key objective here is to ensure that when we roll out the network, the network is one that is utilized effectively for value-creating possibilities, and industry application and use cases are going to be key to drive that. Uh, the focus, like you said, is on 5G. Are you at all concerned that Huawei could be one of the vendors being used for this 5G rollout? Well, our position has been quite consistent. We have said that we emphasize on vendor diverse, diversity, and that's to ensure that we have got uh, sufficient robustness in our system. And it has to address whoever is operating our system has to also meet specific criteria for the licensing, which includes security risks being managed. Uh, and that includes cybersecurity and other kinds of risks as well. So we will operate on that basis and we'll study this and see what else needs to be done. Are you then saying that you do not share the concerns of the U.S. government when it comes to Huawei's gear, basically? Uh, we have not uh, basically been addressing this squarely yet because it's going to be in the context of our 5G work. We are doing our analysis and we will arrive at a conclusion in due course. Has, has, has there been any talk between Singapore and the U.S. when it comes to Huawei, them expressing concerns? Well, we are engaged with all the parties, uh, you know, the views and also not just in terms of the broader security, but also in terms of the technology and what needs to be done and so on. So we engage with a broad range of uh, com countries Including and our counterparts. Of course, the U.S. Uh, and of course, uh, from China, from uh, our region, Australia, New Zealand, uh, uh, U.K. and all, for example. And I think we want to see what the general practices are and the thinking, because at the end of the day, this is something where we have to learn because it's a global trend. So you're saying that it's too early yet to to be concerned about Huawei's gear. Uh, do you think the issue has become unnecessarily political then? Um, I think it's, you know, it depends on your perspective. Uh, each country has its own views on these matters. Um, I think the way Singapore approaches this is we start by defining what our concerns and expectations are. And then from there, we evaluate the proposals that come to us and then we will make a decision on how to go forward. Uh, Minister, in your capacity as uh, the Minister in Charge of Trade Relations, uh, what do you make of the ongoing trade talks within the U.S. and China? Uh, there has, seems to be some implications on export numbers already throughout Asia. Should, do you see that being sustained? Well, I would say this. I think these are the two largest economies in the world, so their economic relationship has a major implication for the rest of the world. And we are a highly trade-dependent economy, so we're watching this very closely. 
I think the fact that the two countries remain engaged in a dialogue that's constructive to arrive at some kind of agreement, uh, an equilibrium hopefully, I think is positive. And I think that will have an impact on consumer and investor sentiments as well. But we have to wait and see how this goes, whether it is a durable, sustainable trend or whether it is a, you know, a blip in response to some initial news. I think we have to wait and see. But of course, our own hope is that the two countries can come to an understanding and an agreement that allows for an equilibrium and a sustainable basis to move forward in terms of global trade. Uh, Singapore obviously not taking chances. It signed a trade agreement with uh, the EU recently. In light of Brexit in the UK, how do you see relations developing? I think the EU-Singapore FTA is a good example of how like-minded countries continue to move forward on the whole globalization and, and economic integration. For Europe, I think Asia represents and ASEAN represents a very interesting opportunity, especially for the SMEs and for Singapore-based companies and companies from our region as well. Europe is an interesting possibility. So we want to engender that deeper engagement. And we think that the EU-Singapore FTA will be a pathfinder to a larger agreement between the EU and ASEAN, for example. So I think Brexit, we have to wait and see what the outcomes are. Uh, but I think our starting position is we want deeper engagement with Europe. And if Brexit were to materialize, then we will then assess how we can also engage with the UK economy.